What is this material? I love it. Costume design is one of the most important ways of communicating character in film, especially in genre film. In an action movie, you know a cop because he's got a badge, in fantasy, a knight because they're wearing armor. A costume can help characters blend in and stand out. But in a murder mystery, how do you dress a murderer? Well, when we think of the murder mystery genre, we usually think of something quite old fashioned and mostly formal clothes. And that's partly because a lot of it is based on Sherlock or Agatha Christie novels, which were written decades ago. Glass Onion is bringing its characters and its costumes into the 21st century, but it's still influenced by the classic tropes of the genre. See, characters often take on defined roles, the butler, the doctor, the maid, Positions that from a glance mean they all look very different. And that visual difference is really important to the genre because there's the implication that only one of them is capable of murder. And you can see that stripped down to its barest in a game like Clue. All six suspects are color coded to differentiate between the potential murderer. Characters are broken down to their appearance. But even though Glass Onion is a slightly heightened film, giving each character a harsh, unique color would be a little too unrealistic. So the film has the task of giving every character a unique look, but also designing them in a way that fits the mold of 21st century characters, like the tech billionaire, the influencer, or the fashion icon. So if you're told one character is a scientist, how do you expect them to dress? Probably a white lab coat, right? Yeah, well, possibly. <laughs> but what about this? Immediately, this tells us a lot about Lionel. He's wealthy, stylish, and concerned about his appearance. And it's suddenly intriguing because he dresses differently than how we might expect. For another one, how about a politician? It's pretty synonymous with a man in a black suit, right? But we get Claire in bland, boring beige. And it tells us she tries to be middle of the road, inoffensive, not draw attention to herself. It still fits the image of a politician, but still feels unique. This is a really clever way of keeping characters in set roles, but avoiding flat stereotypes. It's part of how Ryan Johnson has made the genre feel so fresh. These costumes are visually distinct, they avoid overused cliches, and they feel like they're pulling from the modern world. And most importantly, they give us insight into the character. Because costume is always tied to a person's identity. Look at Birdie J. She's a former model, so part of her sense of self is displayed through her fabulous wardrobe. And there's a stark contrast with Peg, who clearly is not interested in fashion at all. We learn a lot about these two characters and their relationship with each other based on how they dress. And these insights could be true of any genre. But in the murder mystery, it plays a much more central role, as it becomes part of the way we try to unpack these characters. Because in this genre, fashion also becomes potential clues. Look at Birdie's mask. She'll wear one, but it has holes in it. It tells us that she really thinks the rules are beneath her. It's a stretch, but maybe that applies to murder. With Claire, her mask is constantly slipping from her face. She's a politician, so she's concerned about how she's supposed to be seen operating but doesn't seem that concerned with actually following the rules because it's the right thing to do. Or with Duke, he never wears a mask, but even when he's wearing tiny speedos, he carries his gun. Oh my god! Really? All these details in the costume gives characters depth, it reveals who they are, and also highlights their differences. Lionel, uh, use your science brain. I'm working on it. So, costume makes each character distinct, but it can also show how these characters fit together. The thing that brings all the characters to one location is a trope of the genre, whether that be all of them travelling to the same location, or they all work together. And in Glass Onion, the initial reason you might give is that they're all friends, and they are, but I think you get a deeper hint when you look at how they dress. Where do these characters get their clothes? They all have their own style, but aside from Peg, their costumes all display a level of wealth. These are rich people. Costume designer Jenny Egan outlined that nearly every character had a piece of costuming custom designed for this film. These characters do not have outfits you could find in a charity shop. And the only reason they can all stay wealthy is by sticking together with Miles. One of the main themes of the story is about how people will work together to protect their financial interests. So from the costume design, you can understand visually that these people are all different, but they still have a shared social status and class. So, costume can show what you're like on the inside, it can show you belong to a certain group, and it can also be used by a character to project a certain image or identity. And if there's one character's costume that does all of those things, it's Miles Braun. In a flashback scene, we see Miles dressed like this, and on one level, it's quite funny. But if you've ever watched Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia, it might remind you of how Tom Cruise dressed in that. 
The implication here is that Miles has just copied Tom Cruise's look from the film. And one of Glass Onion's key plot points is the fact that Miles never comes up with anything original. He just copies and takes credit for the work of others. Later in the film, we see him dressed in a black turtleneck that's very reminiscent of Steve Jobs and during most of the film in this grey shirt, which seems to be a favourite of Mark Zuckerberg. This costume design works for an audience to visually connect Miles with real world tech billionaires and it's clear Miles himself is trying to project that connection. But again, also implies he's just copying others. Miles Braun is an idiot. So to circle back, how do you dress a murderer? Well, that's really the wrong question because the point is the murderer could be any person and therefore could dress in any way. It's not about telegraphing who the murderer is but showing who these characters are on the inside. And that's what elevates Glass Onion's use of costume. It's not just used for visual appeal, it's constantly used to enhance the actual story. And it does it while still honouring the tropes of the genre and without falling into cliché. So next time you watch a murder mystery, it's important to ask, why did that character choose to wear that? What does it tell us about them? And even if they're only wearing a $200 grey t-shirt, could they be dressed to kill?